Titan TV Weekly Newscast, your news written by you. Hello, my name is Selena Mancuso and this is my co-anchor Brendan Morris. And welcome to the first edition of Titan TV News. Pembroke Community Middle School this year has 16 sets of twins and a set of triplets. Hannah Bonus interviewed the Marshall twins last week. Did you get any media attention for being like having the record for the twins? Well, two, a newspaper and a news channel came to the school and that was about it. Like, yeah. Which news station, which newspaper? I, I think it was News Center 5 and I think it was the Patriot Ledger. Did they come to the school and talk to you? Yeah, but we didn't get interviewed ourselves. But, but most other of the twins, twins did. Yeah. Do you know what kind of questions they got asked? They like got asked like, did you like being a twin or do you have to share a lot of stuff? Did Good Morning America come to the school? No, they said they were thinking about coming, but they never came. Oh, okay. Do you know if they're going to come at all? Just not. All right, so how do you feel about the extra attention you're getting for being part of the record? Um, I don't really mind it, but if we had to, like, travel a lot and, like, miss a bunch of school, it would be kind of annoying. Oh, yeah. When the news stations came, did you get out of class to talk to them? Uh, yeah, we got a lot of, we got out of, like, one uh, period. Everyone's name being the Guinness Book of World Records? We're not sure, but probably not. Yeah. Has like the attention worn down at all, or are you still getting just as much attention as when it started? No, we haven't got a lot of attention. Oh, did you realize that there were so many twins in your grade before the no. attention? I thought that I knew that we had a lot, but I didn't know that we had broken like tied the record. Yeah. How many different schools is the record tied with? I don't know. There's a couple, like maybe two or three. Yeah. PCMS is one set of twins away from breaking into the Guinness Book of World Records. The Blacklight Dance is now going to be held on March 15th at 7 p.m. after being rescheduled due to the storm. A question people are asking is, will attendance be affected by the date change? I'm not going to the Blacklight Dance because I'm a senior and I have better things to do than go to a dance with all freshmen. Um, no, I'm not going because last year was awful and everyone says it's going to be awful, nobody's going to go. And it's expensive, it's like 10 bucks, I don't have that kind of money, I'm not a rich man. I'm not going to the blacklight dance because I have work. No, because of black light and Isaiah is going to be there and if it's black light then black man, black light, there is, you can't see him. The black light will affect the nature. No one will see him. <laughs> I just go incognito. I'm not going to the blacklight dance because it's basically just a lot of teenagers rubbing against each other for no apparent reason, listening to very loud music which is damaging two or two years. Uh, I'm not going because it wasn't fun last year. No. Because my girlfriend won't let me. I am going to the blacklight dance because I am trying to help out the junior and senior classes and they needed more chaperones. I also thoroughly enjoy the blacklight dance because I get to tell kids that they can't have their glow sticks and they also decorate their outfits, which is very exciting for them and they like to show them off. And I think it'll be a good time. So we've got a great DJ. They'll uh, get all those tunes playing and it'll be wonderful. Juniors are hoping for a good turnout to raise money for their class. Pembroke High School's Thespian Society put a lot of preparation into their production of The Sound of Music to be performed in early February. Two shows were canceled due to Snowstorm Nemo. Senior Colleen Burns took the stage as a lead in The Sound of Music. Colleen Burns and I'm a senior and I played Liesl who is the eldest daughter in The Sound of Music. I thought the show went fantastic. Um, unfortunately we only got to do sh two shows instead of three but um, the cast became such a close family and we got to know each other really well and worked really well together and it made for a really great show. I was at my aunt's house and we were without power and we're all like huddled around the kitchen counter and all of a sudden I got a text from our director and she just said the shows are canceled and it was just instant tears. It was so upsetting but um, then we found out that we got to do another show and that was really relieving and we were really excited about that so we were lucky. Knowing that this was a layoffs musical made me give it my all so it was really upsetting and sad but I got a really great role that I wanted to be and I was able to give my all to that role and I feel like a lot of the seniors felt that way and it was really fortunate that most of the seniors got the role they wanted and could work towards making it the best production that they could make it. After multiple reschedulings the cast and crew put their final show on Wednesday February 13th. Dangerous intersections all over Pembroke but which one is the most dangerous? According to recent rankings, the intersection of Washington and Scusett Street is the worst, responsible for 40 accidents between 2007 and 2010. 
Ken Moore, owner of Circle Furniture, which is at the intersection, blames the driveway to the new plaza. Town officials are working to improve the intersection by making it easier to enter and exit. Thanks, Brendan. Now for community notes. Senior Nicole Rice is the first student to represent PHS at the State Poetry Out Loud semifinals. She was one of the 71 people to advance out of the 20,000 students from Massachusetts who participated. Congratulations. Attention seniors, yearbook needs photos. Please give all photos to Miss Hickey ASAP. Congratulations to Brad Wong and wrestling coach Dave Vining for being Boston Globe's Division III Wrestler and Coach of the Year. Congrats also to Colin Claflin for finishing fourth at New England's. The Titans Booster Club is presenting A Taste of Pembroke, Sunday, March 24th from 12 to 3 p.m. Tickets are $5 before the event and $10 at the door. And now, sports with Brendan. Now that the spring season is coming near, it's time to reflect on the success of our winter teams. The wrestling team did big things in the tournament. Seniors Colin Claflin, Ryan Chapman, Brad Wong, and Kevin Bean all won the Division III state championship and Wong represented Pembroke the best way possible by winning the All-State Championship. <laughs> Wrestling wasn't the only team that met with a lot of success though. The boys indoor track team continued to show they were a force to be reckoned with by clinching the Patriot League title again. <laughs> also, the boys hockey team has really gotten hot in the playoffs by knocking off Attleboro, arch rival Silver Lake, and number one seeded Medfield. Back in January, the team was hovering around the 500 mark, and even making the playoffs wasn't a guarantee. How did they turn the season around? Here's Locker Talk with Selena and varsity hockey captain, Josh Golden. Um, I have Josh Golden here. He's a senior at Pembroke High, and he's a cap one of the captains of the Pembroke High um, varsity hockey team. How does this season compare to the previous seasons you've played at Pembroke High? Uh, last season, we had to rely on individuals. This season, we have four lines that we can rely on and we don't have anybody that stands out like we play as a team. That's good. Um, how has the season progressed and gotten better while dealing with many um, illnesses during the winter? <coughs> uh, begin beginning of the season, we had like a couple of games, we had the whole team sick. Uh, we've gotten better with that, I guess. We progressed to the end of the season, finally stepped up, made the tournament this year. Um, how do you think you and the other captains have done, like, motivating your team and getting their confidence levels up? Uh, before and after the game, in between periods, we're getting everybody's spirits up, telling them to keep doing what they're doing, work hard, winding and grinding in the corners. Um, after winning your game against Silver Lake, how has the team's confidence levels gone up? Uh, we've uh, boosted our uh, spirits, finally be beaten Silver Lake 7-1. Uh, Three no this year against them. Um, do you have any other comments or any like specific players that you think have really stepped up lately? Uh, CJ this year stepped up. CJ Buckingham. Uh, last year, yeah, uh, missed a couple of games, half the season. Uh, this year, he's one of the leading point scorers. John Nelson uh, had a bunch of assists this year. Stepped it up. These Icemen are on fire right now. Thanks, Brendan. And that's a wrap of this week's episode of Titan TV News. Tune in for our April episode. See you then.